Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. I'm Brian Warren. I am so excited that you can join us today. You know, Canada is one of the most multicultural nations in the entire world. It, and just in the place where I am right here, there are over 206 different mother tongues that are being spoken. You know, when Jonathan Goforth, when he uh, in Toronto was looking at missions around the world, he believed that it was so important to start in Canada and send people to the nations because he believed that once they were reached here in Canada, they would go to the places that they came from. That's even more relevant now than ever before. And here with me today is special guest, Pastor Andrew Karam of Mosaic Intercultural Church. Now he's a visionary whose church has opened their doors to the nations of the world. Beautiful. Welcome, Pastor Andrew Kerm from Mosaic Church in London. Yeah, thanks for having wow, me. Wow, it's so good to see you. Thank you. You know, when I when I look at you, I am so encouraged because so many people talk about the, the church is, uh, is declining and mm -hmm. attendance and young people are not moving into ministry. Mm -hmm. But I see you and I say, you know what, that is not completely the end of the story. No, it's not. God is doing some amazing things. And yes, tell is. us a little bit about Mosaic Church. And uh, mm -hmm. you're the senior pastor. Yeah, I'm the only pastor at Mosaic. We're a little <laughs> church. We were started just over eight years ago by North Park Community Church. Okay. And we meet in Northeast London. It's a really unique and beautiful neighborhood mm -hmm. where you've got folks from all over the world that have migrated there. It's often a first settlement place in London, Ontario. And uh, our church there, we're trying to help people know Jesus and become his disciples, people from all different life experiences. And uh, it's beautiful. We're small, like maybe 40 people on a Sunday. Yeah. And then throughout the week, we got Bible studies for young adults. We run programs for kids and just trying to build trust with our neighbors and build a community that's following Jesus. You know, diversity is a big thing with you. Huge. And uh, you talk about the, uh, the mosaic culture. Uh, you say 40 people, but that's not just one people group. That, no. that represents a, a diversity, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. It really does. You take those 40 people and on any given Sunday, more than half of them will be white or on another Sunday, more than half of them will not be white, right? Yes. Like if ebbs and flows. We've got people from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Some have come through Zambia. Some have wow. come out of Eritrea and Ethiopia. Um, we've got folks from the States. Um, there's a lot of culture and interaction. And then yes. for us, it's really important to remember that diversity is not just about ethnicity, yes. but also about life experience, right? And so socioeconomic background has a certain kind of cultural vibe to it. Yes. So we take seriously the call of Jesus to build bridges across socioeconomic boundaries as well. Yeah. And so the church, in that little group of 40, you're gonna have that all, all that mix with all the complexity and it's it's beautiful. You know, affectionately, I see you kind of like Dookie Hauser MD. You got this young <laughs> face, but at the same time, you're just going for it with just well, a, thanks, a, you know, <laughs> a strategic <laughs> edge. How did that happen with you? Where, where did that come from? Well, answering the call, because the uh, call a lot of people I, listening yeah. right now, they're saying, you know, I, I don't know if I have a call on my life or I, I think I have something, right. but it could be the L-A-R-D or the L-O-R-D. It could right. be the Tim yeah, Hortons yeah, or it yeah. could be this. But how that. did you know that. that you had a call? Well, the reality is that I was discipled by people who were clear that everybody who knows Jesus is called. Okay. Right? Yes. Everything, my whole life is on the table from day one if I'm following him. So if Come I'm on. trusting him yep. as my savior, yep. he's my Lord as well. Yes. You just say yes to him. And so this idea of a particular call to a particular thing fits within that broader context, right? Mm. So one of my mentors when I was young, um, junior high into early high school, was a guy who had been in the Philippines for a while. He's an American mm. and uh, he and his wife were people who knew the suffering that comes with life, yeah. and they had known the presence of Jesus through that. Mm. And so they just said, whatever Jesus says, we'll do. We go for that. Yeah. And, um, and that got a hold of your totally heart. totally got a hold of me, absolutely, mm. yeah. When you, uh, when you think about the, uh, the, the call of God, because mm -hmm. whatever God calls, God cleans. Whatever God cleans, mm -hmm. God fills. Whatever God mm -hmm. fills, he pours out. But Amen. whatever he pours out, he replenishes and he protects it. Mm -hmm. um, mosaic. Why'd you, why, why plant Mosaic? What, what was the inspiration behind that? Well, that's an interesting story. I actually wasn't 
the one that started the church. Okay. Um, part of the story of Mosaic was that North Park Community Church hired a man named David Cottrell. Okay. He had done um, a master's in urban church planting and cross-cultural ministry at Fuller. Yeah. And then he was working at North Park and they invited Pastor Oscar Murillo from okay. Nairobi Chapel in Kenya to come and visit. Huh. And um, Pastor Oscar and some friends were walking through Northeast London and praying. And Pastor Oscar said, you should plant a church here. Mm -hmm. And that was part of the, the seed that was sown. And then eventually David went ahead and started a Bible study, started a congregation there. But for my, for my part of the story, um, when I visited Mosaic, I was totally compelled by the reality that people had started a congregation where newcomers to Canada mm. were, uh, were participating and where people were also taking seriously the relationship with First Nations peoples. Mm. That combination of newcomers and people who have been raised in Canada, maybe coming from, from a European background or all around the world still, and then also connecting with First Nations people, yes. pretty unique. What, what kind of steps can the church right now take to become more inclusive and, and bring about mm. a, a greater mosaic? Mm. What do you see? Well, I would say that the two big skills that I think are very important, um, one of them, uh, Pastor John Mahaffey told me a while back, he said, you know, the big thing is, to be, is for people to learn how to be friendly. Uh. I thought that was so powerful because learning to build friendships with people is mm. so different from just learning how to serve them. Sometimes people who come from a place uh, like me, I've got lots of skills I want to help people out, but yeah. that doesn't necessarily lead to a friendship. Right. But the skill of building friendships, that's a beautiful thing. And the second thing would be for the churches to learn how to be good learners. Because mm -hmm. crossing cultural boundaries is complex, yeah. um, but love should lead us to learn, yeah. right? I should be interested in your life. I should be interested in the way that you see the world. And above all, I want to learn about Jesus through your life experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think those two things, friendship and learning, can go a long way. Well, you know, you've learned that uh, in an in a interesting way because uh, you're wonderfully married, but also have three daughters. So you have a lot yes, of women in the house. So that uh, means you got to yes. be very patient. <laughs> I think they've got to be really patient too. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, it's the truth, right? Yeah. yeah. It's part of my story. I've been surrounded by incredible women from way, 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 way when I was young. I've yeah, got the same you. thing in my house, too. Not quite yes, three, man. but I mean, I, I, uh, <laughs> I have to learn how to be careful and, and not to become a little bit too masculine to the point where mm. my mouth gets me in trouble. <laughs> but, uh, you, you know, when I, when I think about uh, a, a heart like that, how did Jesus capture your heart, Andrew? Oh, man. Back... Um, probably about 2004. I had been following the Lord for a long time and I was learning campus ministry with InterVarsity Christian Fellowship. Mm -hmm. And somebody said, let's go away and we'll study the Gospel of Mark together. So we spent a week, about 40 hours, just going through the first half of the Gospel of Mark, really slow. And all of a sudden, Jesus caught us into this story. We were living the Gospel as we were studying it together. Yeah. And normally you come away from conferences and you're exhausted. Came out of that one and I was like, oh my goodness. This is extraordinary. I'm filled up. It's been a banquet. Yeah. But what I saw in a way that I'd never seen before was in studying with my sisters, so women in ministry who were uh, friends of mine, I saw how Jesus reconciles men and women together and how he yeah. elevated women in a way that I never saw before. And I was like, man, Jesus is such good news in this time and age that, that women around me are seeing his, his goodness in ways that I, I didn't even know. And I yeah. was seeing the good news through their, through their eyes, if that makes sense. Yeah. And that, the power of the scriptures and the power of Jesus to knit together a community, men and women, all different ethnic backgrounds and socioeconomic backgrounds, um, it, Jesus caught me. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I want to go all in. I want to go all in. Yeah. You know, I, I think there's someone right now that is, that's looking and they're saying, that is so refreshing and, and I want to go all in. Could you help them do that right now? Sure. Yeah. Well, if you are compelled by Jesus and you want to give your life to him, um, can I pray for people? Please, all I right. love you too. I would love to pray with you right now. You can just say, Jesus, show me all of your goodness. Jesus, show me the fullness of your kingdom. Show me the Jesus, show me how alive you are today in this world. Show me how alive you are today And I give you my life and I give, open the door to you. I say, come on in, lead me on this path. Amen. Amen. You know what? I just love your vibe. I mean, like I said, Dookie Hauser, Back up. Look at Andrew Karam. You know, uh, mosaic, uh, mosaic out of broken pieces, 
comes a beautiful picture. That's exactly right. Thank you. I'm Bless looking you. forward to talking a little bit more with you. You know, uh, if you've answered that call with uh, Andrew, one 855 700 Prayer Partners are standing by. I believe today is your day. Out of those broken pieces, God is making you whole. Well, up next, actress Roma Downey shares the painful and inspirational story behind her new book. Don't go away. So this is my book, Box of Butterflies, and I have something very special to share with you today. You ready? Roma Downey is smiling <laughs> and joyous sitting down with CBN at her Lightworker studio outside of LA. She's excited to talk about the release of her new book, Box of Butterflies, which delves into some of her darkest moments. My mother unfortunately died unexpectedly when I was just 10 years of age. It was like the lights had been turned out and it created a lot of uh, uh, heartache and confusion. And I thank God we were a family of faith. And so, you know, we, we were able to really lean into our faith to support us. And I remember going up to the city cemetery with my dad and a butterfly flew up behind the stone. And my dad said, would you look at that little butterfly? Sure, that could be your mother's spirit right there. And in the midst of my, you know, heartbreak as a child, it brought me such comfort, the idea that my beloved mother, you know, somehow was still with me. It also started just to represent that God was with me. And any time I felt down or, um, you know, that I was struggling and I would move into prayer, um, unexpectedly these butterflies would show up, maybe on a truck or on a billboard or a tattoo or something, and they just came to represent um, uh, hope and the goodness of God. Roma, who lost her father while she was in college, talks about how God ordered her steps from Ireland to the Big Apple and how she took a bold step at an audition, landing the role of her career as an undercover angel named Monica on the acclaimed TV series, Touched by an Angel. There was a scene in each episode, we called it on the set, the angel revelation scene, and they would say, God help me, please help me. And that was the moment as the angel that we were able to step in and say, I'm an angel and I have been sent by the Almighty to tell you that you are a special child of His, you know? And who hasn't wished for that moment in their own lives, right? That we, and maybe it won't come so profoundly for us, but, but God is there in all the small ways and in all the kindness that other people show you. You know, I have seen God work through a smile of somebody in a supermarket in a morning that I'm feeling stressed out. I've seen Him work in big ways in my life. He brought Della Reese to me. I was a girl that needed a mother, and Della Reese stepped into my life to be the mother that I'd always longed for. Roma Loster touched by an Angel co-star and friend, Della Reese, in 2017. She finds comfort in knowing Della gave Box of Butterflies her blessing before it went to print. The pages tell how their relationship bloomed beyond the set. I loved her, of course, but I really admired her. She was a pioneer in so many ways, and she was so courageous, having come up in the 50s and 60s as a black woman in this country, and the things that she had to endure just had so much courage and grace. And while we were working together, her only daughter died. And so I became the daughter that she was looking for, and she became the mother that I was looking for. And only God could do that. When I asked her if she would uh, honor me by writing the foreword, and she said, you know, where do I sign up? Her book is filled with scriptures and uplifting quotes from famous poets and influencers, from Nelson Mandela and Helen Keller to Rick Warren. They're words of kindness and love Roma says we all need to hear from time to time. I see when I go on my social media that there's a lot of people hiding behind the anonymity, Instagram handles or Twitter handles, and just saying the most hateful things to each other. And I think like that's one real practical way that we could show up in our faith by, you know, don't be mean. Let's speak words of love to each other. Let's respect each other. Let's reach out 
in uh, and find a little bit of unity. The actress, producer, and author recently launched the website lightworkers.com, which features short video clips that highlight the goodness all around us. It's better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. And I love that. It's like, instead of sitting around moaning about all the negativity or the bad stuff that's happening, get up, get off the couch, and do something about it. Roma acknowledges God's love as the light that guided her through darkness and shaped her into the woman she is today. Oh my gosh, God's love has just taken me, taken the girl who thought she was unworthy. You know, there was a little child in me somehow thought if I had been more or better or had done something different that my mom wouldn't have died. And it was the love of Jesus and you know, they're just leaning into knowing that that unconditional love supply isn't going anywhere. And the promise through our faith and through Jesus that, that my mom might be dead, but I'm gonna see her again. And this is the promise that we all have. And as for our hopes for a box of butterflies, I know that there's somebody out there that's hurting, that's feeling the pain of a loss of somebody they loved. And I wrote the book just for them. I think other people might enjoy it, but I know there's one person out there that's really gonna, you know, is gonna bring home to God. And that was my plan for the book, that it would bring people home to God, that it would, you know, that it would, that it would remind them. And, um, and so I, I pray that's what it does. You know, to hear the story of, of Roma, it really, uh, it's refreshing because I, mm. I knew that and I, I love that program, Touched by an Angel, oh, yeah. but had One no idea favorites. the depth of what God was doing inside of her heart. Mm. Mm -hmm. I love her book, mm -hmm. just her theme of uh, bringing goodness and yeah. purity and uh, hope into the world. I mean, there's already so much darkness in the world to have that moment where we can be reminded of God's truths, mm -hmm. of how much He loves us and, and that He has a good plan for us and that He has overcome the world. All those truths that we need to give us hope yes. in a world that's kind of sometimes spinning a little crazy. You know, the beautiful thing about that is we all need inspiration. And mm -hmm. Della Reese was that mother, that surrogate yes. mother for her. Mm -hmm. And I wonder who the mentor in your life is mm -hmm. that you don't want to disappoint because mm -hmm. you want them to be proud of the things that you are also contributing to this generation. I want to challenge you. If you don't have a mentor, would you allow us to mentor you today and challenge you to think boldly and to move boldly? You know, the Bible says the righteous shall be as bold as lions. In other words, that means you should have a vision that is so big that it scares you spitless and it's doomed to fail without the presence of God. Amen. And I believe that God is a big God and he wants a big vision to come out of us as well. Mm -hmm. And we want to encourage you because it's time for us not only to develop those resources that God has placed in us, but also to help others cultivate them in their own lives as well. Mm -hmm. Up next, born with a million dollar arm and living out of a beat up old Volkswagen van, mm -hmm. Daniel's story is up next. Of all the Major League players, one separates from the pack. Detroit Tigers pitcher Daniel Norris, whose unique approach is as different as the changeup he throws. The changeup, that's a very good analogy. The 25-year-old left-hander is branded the Van Man, living his off-seasons unconventionally in his 78 VW while taking in life with conviction. Labeling, minimalist, nonconformist, free spirit. How does Daniel Norris define himself. I've always seen it as myself. I've always just kind of done what I've enjoyed and whether that's being off the beaten path or non-conforming or whatever it is. Intrigued by curiosity of the world, I guess, and that's where my adventures come. And then as far as the minimalist is, that's just the way I was raised. We were always very simple. We had only what we needed and nothing in excess. As a pitcher, how does the position capture that personality? I think it brings me out of that comfort zone because a lot of times 
off doing my own thing. I'm feeling holding my right hand all day. That's where I have that calm and that peace from. But on the mound, it's like he kind of lights a fire under me to go out there and compete for him. You in that 78 VW camper, you're inseparable. With the off season, I spend a lot of time in it, and that's when I live in it. When I get in the van and I go somewhere, the destination's always great. It usually involves water. I like to be by the ocean, but the journey there is, is always just so peaceful. I mean, I can't go over 55 miles an hour and, you know, you're in the right lane and I'm just talking to God the whole time. And, or if I'm listening to music, that's something I've just always enjoyed. As a photographer, what does that lens let you see that the eye normally doesn't? For one, I, I want to share God's creation, whether that be the mountains or the ocean or a human being, I want to share that. And I'm very drawn to um, the homeless people or poverty. And I think that we all can be inspired by St. Francis and to follow Jesus in giving. For me, that's just so inspiring to be able to to, to want to help the people that are less fortunate. And that brings me happiness. Living intentionally, that's just so important to me. Living intentionally, is that another way of living with an eternal perspective? Absolutely. I mean, every single step I take every day should be with the intentions of living eternally with God. If you're always focused on God and your mind never leaves Him, you're not gonna make the mis mistakes that have held you captive your whole life when you fall victim to the, you know, your failings in the past. So for me, it's living intentionally means living with God, you know, every step. There's, there's intent with every step. You know, every pitch has intent. When we hear nonconformist radical, it's not often Christianity is tied to that, especially today. Should Christianity be at the forefront of that conversation? I believe so personally. Being a Christian is radical. You should live radically. You should love radically. You should give radically. For me, I, I challenge myself to kind of live that way and just go out of that comfort zone. You know, I think that's just really important to really embody, you know, Christ in that way is think, what would Jesus do? He would do a lot of things that we're not doing. How do you think the current American church could show a greater contrast of Christ in culture. We think of church as we walk into it, but I think church and worshiping God is every day. It's individually, as a team, as a congregation, it's everything. I can go to this baseball field and worship God. I can go in my van and worship God. That's, to me, that's church. My main goal is to glorify God no matter what I do, whether it's warming up, throwing a bullpen, pitching in a game, striking people out, or even giving up a home run, and trust that God will get you through it. I'm very cognizant of it as I'm pitching. To me, that's church, and we shouldn't feel conformed into the building. I just love Daniel's heart and the just ability to live unashamedly for Christ. You know, uh, when he talked about living intentionally, I think that's really what God calls all of us to do, to live intentionally. But I think so many times what we do is we struggle with what other people think about us. You know, psychologists, they, they say that I'm not who I think I am, I'm not who you think I am, but I'm who I think I think you think I am. And so, therefore, what I end up doing is I start struggling and I get caught with this identity crisis. But your identity is not based on what you do, but it's whose you are. And when you belong to Christ, you become a new creation. The Bible says in 1 Peter, and this is the second chapter in the 11th verse, it said, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners, as pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which wars against the soul, having your conduct honorable, that you can give a, a, a good report on why you do what you do. I want to get something into your hands. It doesn't cost you anything, but I want to challenge you. I want to put your feet to the fire, and I want you to even say, what is my dream? What is my destiny? What do I want my epitaph? What do I want on my gravestone to be? I don't want you to just live for tomorrow and live for today, but I want you to live for eternity. Father, in the name of Jesus, would you remove the fear, the fear of man, which is a snare, and would you cause faith to rise up now in your son and in your daughter and light a fire unto them that everyone would see your glory through them. In Jesus' name, amen. If you accept the challenge, 1-855-759-0700, prayer partners are standing by. We'll be right back. He just started with the usual symptoms of flu. Um, one shot blood is half overtaken with a parasite. Naturally speaking, there's no coming back from that. He has maybe two or three hours left to live. 
and I'm just praying and pull myself together. And I remember in that moment just thinking, oh my goodness, God is doing something here. God's doing something. Miraculous Blessings, available now. What a refreshing program today. You're listening yeah. to Roma Downey and the Butterflies and Daniel Norris mm -hmm. and also looking at Andrew Cram. Mm -hmm. You know, he said something interesting to me. He says, when you uh, came to my youth group, <laughs> if you want to feel old really quickly, Andrew said, and he gave me a card. He said, I want to say thank you because I played the piano. I wasn't very good, but you were very gracious to me. I said, oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear anything <laughs> after you said I'm old. Yes. <laughs> because, no, I'm just teasing you. Uh, ah. Now, you're going to have to take the, <laughs> you're going to have to be on the couch now. We're uh -huh. going to have to give her a little, pray for uh -huh. her, pray uh -huh. for this woman, Dr. Yeah. Mary. But, uh, you know, it has been a, a really refreshing time because mm -hmm. we're seeing people that are really living life, living large. Yeah, and that's what really encouraged me is you hear these lives uh, and maybe you're listening as well and you think, my life's a mess. I have nowhere to go. There's no way that the Lord can use me. And if you hear the stories that uh, we just saw today, think about how God has turned their lives around, their 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 pain and their struggles and has been able to use great um, ministry out of that. Absolutely. Yeah. So just to be encouraged that that is God's plan for your life. It is. And what we enjoy is every time we get an opportunity to pray with you and pray for mm -hmm. you. And thank you for your uh, likes on Instagram, but also, uh, also sending in your praise report. But would you put on your prayer list Jacques, and is praying for financial prosperity. Mm -hmm. And Dean has a calling to the missions field, and mm. so he's praying for clarity. We touch base with yeah, all of those. Father, we thank you for Jacques, and you said that you would prosper even as your soul prospers. But also with Dean, we mm -hmm. do ask, and there would be many mm. that would go out, just like Andrew today, into their communities, within reach, but also doing outreach for your glory and honor. Lord, not just because of them, but because you're so great. And for your namesake, we pray that you would now release them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mm. Hey, we want to leave you with a power verse. The Bible says this, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all you who hope in the Lord. And that's from Psalm 31, 24. Keep living large until next time. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca or write to us at Christian Broadcasting Associates, Incorporated. The 700 Club Canada, P.O. Box 700, Scarborough, Ontario, M1S4T4. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram.